right, thank you very much, Carl. Um, our next, next speaker is Professor Li Ping Chen, um, Professor of Immunology, Dermatology, and Medicine in Medical Oncology. He's the director of the Cancer Immunology Program at the Yale Cancer Center at Yale University. And uh, Dr. Chen has been a leader in the study and understanding of co-stimulatory signaling in uh, T-cell biology and exploiting, uh, manipulating co-stimulatory uh, and inhibitory pathways for enhancing cancer immunotherapy. Dr. Chen. Okay, the, um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the, uh, the, the organizers for this meeting, Tyler Jacks, Jen Zhu Chen, uh, invite me to this uh, meeting. Um, I'd like to, uh, the, in, the, in the first few slides, I'd like to introduce the very basic concept of this co-simulation, co um, which you have worked on this area for more than uh, 25 years now. And the, also, the, uh, we'll show you some of why we think about this. Is a, it's a, it's a one, one of the great approach to, to, to access the cancer immune therapy area. And then finally, show you, uh, briefly show you some clinical uh, results, um, which is using the manipulation of this co or inhibitory pathway to treat the cancers. So this is disclosure, uh, which is the most relevant is the, uh, I have some, uh, this, uh, our technology was licensed to uh, Matrix, now it's uh, part of uh, Bristol-Myers Squibb. The, as they mentioned, uh, the, uh, Carl just mentioned the, the T-cell receptor, which is a very important part, a very, very crucial part of the uh, T-cell activation. Now, in addition to here, so this is a T cell receptors. Once you have the uh, engagement of the ligand, which is the antigen and the MHC complex, then you have the deliver to T cell uh, primary signals. This signal is critical for initiate the uh, the specificity and the and the and also the early uh, the triggering of the T cell activities. Now, the we are uh, approach this uh, uh, the T cell activation from a little bit different angles. Is the because there's a large number of the molecules which also display simultaneously on antigen presenting cells, and the, the receptor is on the T cells. So after this engagement of all these molecules, then they started to modulate the T cell receptor, the uh, signaling. The, this modulation can be either stimulatory, which is the, uh, will enhance or amplify the uh, primary signal, which is from T cell, T cell or this other uh, set of molecules, which, uh, which after engage the receptor on T cells, they deliver inhibitory signal, which either uh, completely shut down or partially shut down the T cell uh, signaling, or they convert this T cell uh, re uh, reaction to completely different directions, such as the tolerance or, or, or so-called energy. Interestingly, is this um, the interaction of this inhibitory or stimulatory molecules it happens in every stage of the uh, T cell activation process. It can start from very early, naive T cells in the lymph node. You have this engagement of the co simulation CD28, uh, C um, the B7. And recently, we also found the, there's a some of uh, the, uh, the early suppressive molecules, such as the, uh, the, the program DES1 homologs. They consistently express on T cells and deliver uh, uh, control the early activation. And before the T cell exit lymph node or the lymphoid organs, they already are being controlled by lots of uh, suppressive molecules. Once the uh, initial co uh, signaling has been delivered, such as the, uh, uh, as mentioned uh, previously, CTLV4, and the, this, is a, this is one of the major inhibitory molecules even before the uh, T cell go out to the periphery. Now, in the pre in, once the uh, T cell get primed, finish priming, and then exit to the lymphoid organ, then they subject to the, uh, another level of controls. These controls is the, uh, this is uh, actually uh, kind of outdated uh, reviews. Uh, now it's a lot more molecules are discovered. They control either in the effect and memory T cell level or the, in, the, in the side of the, uh, the, the, the effect um, the, uh, organs. 
So today, uh, the, I'm going to focus on this particular pathway, which we uh, now study more than 15 years. The, right now, there's four molecules uh, uh, has, uh, uh, has been identified uh, clearly, uh, which we, we believe might have another player. Uh, the, uh, we're still working on that. The, the molecule, called, there's a one ligand called P B7H1, which when, you know, when we, uh, this, this name we gave initially, now it's, uh, there's another popular name, it's called PDL1, because the, uh, the, um, the Dr. Hangzhou and the um, Gordon Freeman, Dana Faber, found this molecule binds to uh, PD1. Now this molecule is doing more than just PDL1, because they also binds to another, uh, the, uh, uh, the potential receptor on the activate T cells, the CD80, which is the ligand for the CD28. However, in, if they express on the T cells, they can serve as the receptor which deliver a negative signal. This data uh, has, uh, is initially described by the Gordon Freeman at the, at the Faber. Now, second ligand, which is uh, called, in initially called B7DC, and later also uh, renamed as PDL2, because they also binds to PD1 and deliver negative signals. Now, uh, the, this, the, this molecule, uh, the data has been uh, uh, a little, uh, the still, um, I think we try to figure out why the, they are not always, they are not always uh, suppressive in the system. They sometimes can be stimulatory. So the, the, there uh, appears to be lots of evidence now point to they might have another molecule involved. The, the, B7H1, this PDL1, um, this is one of the uh, interesting molecules. When we first um, the, the, uh, found this, clone these molecules, um, when, we, uh, when we started work on this, in, uh, in that time was based on the, uh, the database analysis and the homology search. And we come out these molecules, even they look like B7, which this is why we name as B7 homolox one. The, they have very different expression pattern as the, uh, the like B71 or B72, CD80 uh, or CD86. First, first of all is the RNA is virtually everywhere. Okay? You, can dis you can find the RNA in every tissues and, and literally every cells you, 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 uh, in the uh, cell culture, uh, culture cells in the, in the lab. Low, even is low level, however, they can be upregulated very quickly to the, to the inflammation uh, agents such as the uh, type 1 interferon, which I, I, I'm going to mention a little more, more later. And protein, in the protein level, it's rare, very rare in the normal tissues. We did find a fraction of the dendritic cells, macrophage or B cell, they do express, and some stem cell do express a low level. Again, this is a, can be induced very easily. We found is virtually every nucleated cells uh, test so far can be induced. We did a very extensive uh, tissue uh, section uh, in, that, in that time to, uh, to see the expression uh, profiles. In the normal tissues, we do see constitutive expression in four different or four organs. One is the liver. You can see this is the Kupfer cell-like cells, which is constitutively positive. Lung, also you see some macrophage-like cells. In the tonsil, you see a lot more expression, suggesting this particular n normal individuals might be, have some low-level in infection going on or are the, um, constantly exposed to the environment. So this probably have some uh, the uh, cytokine released and induced this expression. Presenta, that's another critical organ, also consistently express high level of this PT B7H1 and PTL1. What we found is the most important the, um, the cytokine which is controlled the expression of this molecule is the interferon family. This can be interferon gamma or the type 1 interferon, alpha, beta. They're all very potent inducers. And then there's a couple other uh, toll-like receptor like LPS. Uh, they also control this expression. PT1, which is response to T cell receptor signaling, and the uh, a large number of cytokines uh, have found to upregulate these molecules. So quite interestingly is the, when we, not, when we made a knockout of this, these molecules, and we actually, one postdoc was, was uh, spent actually almost three years trying to find the phenotypes, and this is the only phenotype we found is the, we found some accumulation, low level accumulation of CDA cells in non-lymphoid non organ, but not in the lymphoid organ. You can see this lymphoid organ, cymus, spring, or lymph node, you see white type have these double positive cells here, single positive, single positive CD4 and single positive CD8. 
and you can see this is the white type, and then the knockout, you can see this is virtually no differences. CD4 and CD8 both compartment, and they also double positive uh, compartment. However, in the, in the peripheral organ, especially when, when mice aged, you see the liver accumulation, this is a CD8 in the, in the white type, and then the, from 8% 8, 8%, 8 to 27% in the knockout. And CD4 is the, we see mild increase, but, but most of the time it's not, not, not really significant. Now, lung, you can see this is 7 to 11, okay. kidney also significant increase. So we, after the, uh, a couple years study uh, with knockouts and antibody uh, blocking studies, we conclude is this particular pathway, uh, the interaction of this endogenous B7H1 and the PD1 interaction and the, um, and, and the other, other molecules such as B7DC, which is mostly expressed in the antigen presenting cells. This pathway, the physiological function is the, we call it peacekeeper. This molecule is in very low level or activity in normal tissue. As I showed, there's, there's, virtually, um, <clears throat> there's virtually very low level expression only in few organs which are probably exposed to the, um, to, the, to the low level infection. Now, activation, in, this is activation induced systems. Okay? When you have a tissue damage or the uh, inflammation, then the system come, come up and they are generally suppressive, try to shut down the the, uh, the inflammation in the tissue, try to control the, to maintain tissue integrity, to protect tissue. Okay. Now, interestingly, cancer cells or cancer stroma cells in a cancer microenvironment overexpress this molecule because of, of immune response. Then they use that to suppress immune response in the cancer microenvironment. So when we first, when, the, when we started the, this study, um, in, in the beginning, we were not really uh, very seriously study this molecule because this is one of the molecules in that time in the lab. We were busy studying a couple of TNF family molecules, uh, the, such as 41BB and the light HBEM interaction. Uh, also, a couple of other uh, B7 family molecules we isolate, uh, such as B7H4, H3, icos ligands. So this is just this is just one of the molecules in that time was was we were, were playing around in the lab. Now, the really two, two findings really make us very seriously consider this molecule that might have some uh, application uh, or, or, or usefulness in the, in the cancer treatment. One is the, well, I, in that time, I have one of the, uh, um, the uh, surgeon work, uh, head and neck surgeon, Scott Strong, now is at the University of Maryland. He um, actually uh, initiated this study showing the, um, these molecules this 5H1 clone, which is staying this human uh, B7H1 or PDR1 uh, molecules, and he found this, uh, this melanoma uh, express actually very high level of this, this molecules, and also ovarian, lung, and later we found is the majority of the human cancer, they always a fraction of the human cancer, they constitute express these molecules. This is what looks like in the, what the staining looks like in the, in the melanoma, very typically. As you see, this is a tumor in the middle. Then this age, you see this is the staining of the, this PDL1, right, B7H1. You see this is a fibroblast, a largely negative. Some of them might be positive. And the, this age effect is clearly associated with infiltrating of lymphocyte because we see they always co-express. Co, the, the co-express with, with the, the CD4, CD8 uh, molecules, uh, the uh, markers. So second event which make us um, the, uh, really uh, spend a lot of time to study is when we, um, what, we, what we found is this molecule actually uh, is a very strong supp suppressive molecule when they express on cancer cells. This is just one data show you. We have, in that time we have, before this study, we have uh, shown the tumor cells, when you transfect co-sematoly molecule B71, CD80, you can have a very strong tumor suppressive effect, meaning is the, this is the PA15 mouse cytoma, tumor, mouse tumor cells. When you transfer or oh, over-express this B71 co-sematoly co molecules, then tumor, in, when implanting into syncytial mice, the mice, the, the tumor is transiently grow to about five millimeters, square millimeters, then they the regress completely okay, in about three, four weeks. Now, we've, what we found interesting is the, if we 
transfect this B7 and H1 into this highly immunogenic tumor, okay, then this is a, the, uh, these tumors become a pro progressive again. Okay? They, they grow very quickly. And the, you can see this, uh, uh, the, this is other controls, B7 and H1 transfect cells, okay, which grow a little bit faster than white type. So then, the, uh, then there's a lot of mechanism study follow after that. Is the, there's a, quite a bit of mechanism now uh, showing this interaction can suppress immune response. The, mo the major focus now is the, on the signaling from ligand to the PD-1, which is showing you can induce uh, IL-10, you can induce T cell tolerance, you can induce the, the T cell exhaustion. Uh, because of chronic expo uh, exposure, apoptosis, and also control Treg and a APC activity. Another um, the uh, um, finding we found we we we, uh, we described a couple of years ago is this molecule can in fact can, can act as a receptor also after PD1. In this case, PD1 is a ligand. Once the T cells and tumor cells start to interact with each other, PD1 can deliver reverse signal to the tumor cells through this B seven H one and induce anti-apoptotic signals, okay, which this is an anti-apoptotic pathway appear to be is not typical, uh, the K-space, the OR, the uh, B B02, we are still working on that to, to it's not a fast either. So the, uh, we try to, uh, now still working on that to figure out the, what's the mechanism. So the, <clears throat> now, now the, how this system worked in vivo, how this suppression happened in vivo, this is what we try to figure out. The, so one interesting phenomenon in that time we, we saw is the, when we take out a, a, tu a tumor cell line, cultural tumor cell line, okay, either human or mouse, in vitro, when you stand with this antibody, you, you usually don't see the expression okay, in the culture cell line. Only, the, only positivity is from the, um, the fresh isolated specimen. Okay. So the, this is what was confused us for a while. But later, the, uh, the, we found is the cytokine interferon gamma is a very potent inducer. Okay, here you see the one hour, three hours, the, um, there's no uh, increase. But six hours, you see some upregulation. 16 hours overnight, usually eight hours, you see lots of upregulations. And uh, later, we also show the type 1 interferon can do the same thing. They're also very potent inducer of these molecules. Now, this, when, when this all put together, uh, this is in vivo, in vivo data. Actually, we, we did a uh, mi micro dissection uh, of this infiltrating lymphocyte. You can see this is a B7H1 positive, uh, as I showed before, staying with antibody. Then this, when we cut this piece of tissue and then did a, the, uh, the, the, the RT-PCR, uh, quantitative RT-PCR, then you can see clear association of this interferon in this, uh, in the, uh, you can see this B7H, uh, if it's positive, you can see lots of interferon. And then if there's negative tumors, then it's, uh, it's undetectable, okay? This is in vivo data. So this is all makes sense now to us, is the, we describe this mechanism as, as the ad called adaptive resistant mechanism. This is the, described to, to, um, as how the system worked in vivo, how they suppress, su suppress cancer immune response. We know the, uh, the cancer, uh, as, as, as the, uh, summarized by Carl, Carl Jung, is the cancer is the, when, you, when cancer is growing, you have, a, you have lots of antigens, and presented by antigen presenting cells, and they transport this antigen to the lymphoid organ. Then the T cell, all the T cell priming happen here. Then you have effective T cell come out, migrate to the tumor site, and start attack tumors. Now, the current strategy is to either increase you know, coronal antigen, isolated antigen, loaded to make a more potent antigen presentation, or the uh, use adjuvant to facilitate the antigen presentation or processing, and the stimulation capacity to, to get better, uh, prime, to get better stimulation of T cells, so you, then you can generate very powerful T cell, uh, effective T cells. After migrate to tumor cell, I think this is one of the missing button. Uh, this is one of the missing link. Is the when effective T cell come to the tumor site, then they will encounter the molecules such as the uh, B7H1, and the and the, because the PD1 is consistently expressed on this effective T cell, then the immune response will be shut down in a cancer microenvironment. This is one of the 
the problems, in the, particular in the solid tumors. You have this microenvironment already well established. Now, ironically, is this B7H1, usually they, don't, they do not express, as I described. They actually respond to the, these effective T cells. When effective T cells come to the, uh, the, uh, the, come to tumor site, they start to kill tumor cells, but in the meantime, they will release these effective molecules, such as interferon gamma. Then interferon gamma will upregulate the, this suppressive pathway, then shut down immune response in the, in the tumor site. This is the one, we believe this is the one of the, uh, the, the issue, um, is the, why this many cancer vaccine uh, encounter uh, have a problem. Because in lots of cancer vaccine, you, you can detect the effect of T cells after vaccination. You can detect lots of very good T cells which are capable of killing tumor cells, but, tum but they will not be able to irradiate the cancer. It's because of this microenvironment. There's a lot of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the issue in the microenvironment. So to compare, the, uh, this is a PD-1, and then this is another uh, suppressive molecule called CTOA4, which is, I, I, I always get lots of questions about how, what's the difference is. I believe one major difference is, and this is also a lot of data support that, is CTO4 uh, is a suppressive molecule. The ligand is the B71 and 2, which is largely expressed on antigen presenting cells in the lymphoid organ. Okay? So this, this molecule is control the systemic immune, immune response, and it also control the uh, auto reactivity. Okay? So when you knock out CTO4, you got very early uh, the uh, the death of the mice because of this is a, um, the uncontrolled, the, the auto-reactive T cell proliferation and then in, in virtually all the lymphoid organs. Okay, then they start migrating to tissues. Now this system, PD-1, B7H1 system, the, as I mentioned, the, the molecular ligand normally not express on the, on the tissues or antigen presenting cells, uh, small fractions. And the, they, they have very low activity in the normal tissues, only in the inflammatory site. Okay. Then you have upregulation of the ligand. So I, ligand is really controlling the, uh, the is really a re limiting factors. Now when, when T cell activate P PD-1, uh, express PD-1, then the, you have, uh, you go to an effector site, only in the effector organ then you have these pathways really start operating. So the, this is, we believe, this is why uh, you don't see, when, when given this antibody block PD-1 or block PD ligand 1, you don't really get lots of uh, auto reactivities because most of uh, immune activation is happened in the tumor site. So just quickly summarize this some clinical trial data. Uh, the early trial was, uh, this is starting, uh, in that time we, uh, it, um, actually, I, here I, I, should, uh, um, I should say this is very different from what Carl Jung just described. As the, this is a com pharmaceutical company is involved in the very early because the, um, they have very critical technology. In that time, it's the company called Matrix. Um, they have this uh, the, uh, called Exino mice. You can make fully human antibody <coughs> by, immun <coughs> by immunized mice. This is a, it's a human immunoglobulin, not king gene, not king mice. So the, the, um, now we um, work with the matrix. Um, they make these new uh, fully human uh, antibodies. They, they, made, they made this new antibody, and which is uh, anti-PD-1 and also anti-PD-1, and block the interaction of these suppressive pathways. So the first trial was initiated at, um, was uh, 2006. Um, and this is a summary of the, uh, the, the phase one, large phase one trial, uh, phase one B, or, or you can consider phase two. It's a two, 296 patients, five different cancers, uh, melanoma, renal cell carcinoma, uh, lung, small cell lung, and then uh, prostate and the uh, colon cancers. Uh, the appears to be uh, melanoma have the best, uh, the, uh, the objective response. This is part, either partial response or a complete response. Uh, melanoma, the, in, the, in the best dose, which is just, appears to be three milligrams per kilo, uh, per kilogram of body weight is up to 40% uh, in that particular trial. Now the uh, renal cell carcinoma, you can see also uh, lots of activities. This is a lower, if you use a lower, uh, even 0.3 milligram per kilo, you still can see some activities. 
Now, the most exciting, I think, is lung, small cell lung cancers, which is very few uh, real effective therapy around, and also responsed. And the, uh, especially those adeno, mostly adenocarcinomas, appears to be a significant response. This treatment is well tolerated. As I mentioned, uh, um, this is because uh, most T cell activations happen in the uh, tumor site, so that we don't get lots of systemic uh, autoimmune reactivities. So far, the most, most severe um, the side effect has been a pneumonitis, um, which is uh, probably something to do with accumulation of inflammatory cell in the lung. And the response is highly durable. Okay. And the, uh, the large patients is already uh, they live for many, many years. The, the, uh, only the, about two weeks, two weeks ago, uh, uh, in fact, last week, in the, this new, uh, the ASCO meeting, annual ASCO meeting, reported a new large number of trials. Uh, this one trial is from uh, the Merck antibody, showing in 135 uh, advanced melanoma, the, in the 10 milligram per kilograms response rate, um, this is the objective response rate, it's up to 52%. And Bristol-Myers have uh, initiated this combination uh, trial with anti-PD-1 and anti-CTO-4, and uh, in, the, in this patient, in, the, in this 50 patient treated, uh, this is a, uh, if one plus three, uh, one is anti-PD-1, and three is anti-CTO-4. It, it, it seems to me it's like it should be uh, the other way around. Um, then it's up to 50% uh, response. This 50% response is majority of patients is actually more than 80% of tumor volume reduction. So it's very effective, uh, the uh, therapies. Another uh, anti-PD-1 uh, antibody, uh, genetic, is developing, also showing very active. It, um, more than just in these three uh, the tumors which show effective before, also show colon rectal cancers, gastro cancers, also some ovarian cancers. So there's a large number of trials right now con is ongoing. Uh, you can see there's a lot of them. This is, uh, uh, my apology for this busy, busy slides. Uh, there's a, uh, the lots of them are combination trials which combine with the cancer vaccine, with the, um, the uh, lots of, uh, uh, the chemotherapies and um, the, some anti-tumor, uh, the uh, targeting drugs. <clears throat> so to show you some clinical uh, data, which is we, uh, uh, <clears throat> this is the early uh, trials, which we're very excited, is showing immune therapy. In that time, we try to convince ourselves <clears throat> is the, um, the immune system can be very powerful, okay? Because in that time, um, the immune system considered is only can be effective probably in a small tumors. Okay, or mycometastasis in that time. Okay. But now you can see the give this antibody, this, this MDX, this early slide, still uh, is matrix antibody. Now it's part of Bristol-Myers script. And you can see this is a metastatic uh, melanoma. You can see this large lesion, cutaneous lesion, and this is the even bigger one. Okay, you can see this is a, after treatment, one cycle and a, and a few other, other injections. These even very large tumors can regress completely or near completely. This is a lung cancer. You can see this is very large lesions. Okay, and then after a few treatment, after four treatment, you see this is a pretty much completely regressed. This is another large lesion in the same patient. We also uh, see one of the uh, very large uh, the lung cancer liver metastasis. This size is about one third of the liver size tumor, stage four, uh, liver, liver mat, okay? You can see this after the uh, a couple cycles. This is, I think it's five cycle. This is a can <coughs> completely regress. This only, you can see the scar, okay? So immune system can be very, uh, very, very strong and very powerful if you manipulate in the right way. This is showing the one of the, uh, th this one patient, uh, <coughs> metastatic renal cell carcinoma, this is a, a stage four melanoma. I have lots of metastasis in the lymph node, muscles, lung, and the pancreas. So each of size is beginning of the treatment in label here. And you can see this one, three treatment, okay, tumor regress. Now we see lots of the, this kind of patient is so-called partial responder. Tumor is re, reduce the size, but, may, but keep still in there, even after this two years, like 48 months. Okay, tumor is still there, so it, it, this has been considered as a partial responder, but tumor has not increased the volumes. They maintain the OR slowly regress. Some of, just keep it there for many, many years. Okay. 
This is another patient. You can see this is a large met, uh, uh, metastatic melanoma in the lymph node liver. This is the beginning, the volumes. And some of more volume transiently increase, actually even, and then, uh, and then decrease. Some will keep the same size for many, many years. This is a more than two years treatments. And we see some new lesion come up, which is the, um, which, which we, in that time was, was, was wondered, this might be a resistant, but it's not, because the, this new lymph node will come out, give another, another round of treatment, another couple of rounds of treatment, tumor will regress again. So the, this treatment, uh, now we know this work on a fraction of patient. Okay? I just show you percentage, which is around 30 to, say, 50% of melanomas. And then the all, uh, all is in the fraction of the cancer. Now, why is that? Okay, this is one of the uh, very important issues we, we, we're very interested. So when we did a uh, study, uh, used the, we did just simply did an uh, immunohistochemistry okay? study with 110 human uh, melanoma patients. We see this uh, uh, just by staining of the B7H1, and also the, uh, to observe the uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocyte. Then we see this is a, a can be, patient can be divided into these four different categories. Okay. Majority of them is in, in the first category. This is a, have B7H1 negative and no infiltrating lymphocyte. This is the one of the, uh, the, the major uh, the, the issue in the, in, the, in the therapy. We don't really see the patient, if with this pattern, they respond. Okay? This is all non-response in, in this group. b 7 positive and TO positive, this is the, the, the nearly all the responder is in this category. Okay? Now there's more trial is ongoing. They show some of uh, the initial negative patient might, might also positive, but those could be the uh, different technique of staining or the, uh, there's maybe the re-induced this, this, uh, this category one, or type one, converted to type two. Now, another interesting, um, the uh, uh, type, which is about 20% of the patient, is b 7 negative, but there's a T cell, clearly there's a lot of T cell infiltrating T cells. It's there in, in the lesion. So this clearly indicates to us is the, there's other suppressive mechanism here and inhibit the, 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 uh, the, the T cell response in the tumor lesion, which is other than b 7 h one okay? Now, there's 1%. We only have one case, one patient out of 110. Is the, we see constituted express high level of these molecules, but no T cell infiltration. So now we know this is because of some oncogene mutations, such as P10. Um, they directly control the expression of these molecules. Okay? They upregulate these molecules. And this is irrelevant to the, uh, to the, to, this is very different from this type, which is inflammation induced the adaptive resistance, okay? It's b 7 upregulation. So this have implication for the future design of the clinical trials. Um, these four different types, I think, is need to be treated very differently. First type, as I mentioned, is what we call double negative, okay? There's no, this pathway is not being used and there's no T cell uh, alert. So it appears to be immune system view this tumor almost like normal tissues, but they don't even come in. So this has to be treated very differently. You have to alert immune system first, like for example, to induce inflammation or to recruit, try to recruit inflammatory cells to the tumor site. Okay. Simply ju just by inject the, this blocking antibody will not work, okay, because there's no uh, infiltrating lymphocyte there to work with. Now, second type, this is the one need to uh, with treat to block this pathway. Now, third type, which is the infiltrating lymphocyte, but there's other pathway being used okay, because this pathway is negative. Now, this is the one is really uh, uh, the uh, this need uh, other uh, the uh, suppressive mechanism need to be discovered. Okay. Now, final uh, uh, the, the this type is the we even we see very few in the melanoma. Now we start seeing more in the lung cancers and in the, uh, the brain tumors. The, those oncogene, because there's some oncogene mutation, is highly related to the, the directly in the control of b 7 expression, such as P10, P10 mutation is very frequent in a, in a neo, neo, uh, neoblastoma. So those are will need to be treated differently also. Okay? You, have to, uh, you, ha you have to get uh, the uh, T cell infiltration also, similar to the first stage, and also block this pathway. 
I think it's from this study, we also learn from this, uh, the, uh, this human study. Uh, now we, we call it reverse translation okay, to, the, to use the, the new animal model to study this phenomenon. Is we believe the lots of uh, animal models, which only right now only model, only modeling a subset of the patient. Okay, it, because in the, in the animal model we see lots of cons controversial data come out, and then says, well, particular type is particular type of tumor, particular uh, the models, they have some phenomenon, let's say tolerance. But then the there's only a fraction of them. Uh, this the each type only appears to be only mimic one type of cancers. This is from our studies. For example, um, uh, the, the, the f first of all, obviously, we, we need to use uh, models to study more on the microenvironment versus lymphoid organ. Uh, I think it's now the uh, majority of studies focus on how to boost T cells in the lymphoid organ. I think that later we need to more focus on the uh, tumor site. Now, highly, he highly heterogenic uh, microenvironment in the human it will probably will require different modelings. For example, the inflammation versus non-inflammatory cancers. Okay. Some of mouse models tend to induce inflammation. You, you do have automatically, uh, spontaneously attract the lots of inf inflammatory cells into cancer, but others not. So this would be a very different uh, the, uh, <clears throat> models to be treated, and probably totally different strategy of immunotherapies. B7H1 versus B7H1, positive versus negative in the tumor site. That is, that's another um, parameter to consider. A very different mechanism, as I described. In the, <clears throat> for example, in the type 2, which is B7H1 positive and, and, a, and the tumor you know, infiltrating lymphocyte, then tolerance is induced by this particular pathway. But then the third type, which is the B7H1 negative, but, but these are still tolerated, then there's a very different mechanism. Okay, so this need to be treated differently. So I think now we go back to revisit, reevaluate the, the different animal models. Uh, so we believe we need to uh, establish at least three different types of animal models to mimic what we found in the clinic. So that, that is the ongoing study. So the, the, here is the, uh, the people really contribute to, to the work. Is, the, is Dr. Dang, Hai Dong Dang, is the early, uh, is the postdoc involved in the early cloning and the, also the uh, the gene knockout study analysis. He's now in the, uh, the uh, uh, faculty, run his lab in the Mayo Clinic. Sagat so Strong, as I mentioned, involved in the early human studies. And the uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, when I moved Johns Hopkins, the colleagues, uh, Janice Taub and Bob M. Uh, the uh, Enders is the, uh, uh, made a cr critical contribution to the uh, analysis of the t human tissues and the immune response in the, in the, in, in the tissues. And Zhu Pados, Julie Brim and Susan Topelian is involved in the clinical trial. Yale, in Yale now we uh, have uh, a team up with uh, uh, Mario Snows, Scott Gettinger, David Ram is a pathologist, and Lloyd Herbst, this is a lung cancer specialist, to, uh, to do a, write the clinical trial in the lung cancer and the melanoma. I, I, I actually own the, um, the uh, thanks to the, uh, to the early uh, the, uh, development of the <coughs> this, uh, this, uh, this drug. Is in that time is uh, Medrex. Now it's part of Bristol-Myers script. Issy Lowy, he's, he's an audience, and is uh, the, um, really the running the, the trials. And Leon Lumber and Alan Coleman is constantly, we have a debate on the science, and the, uh, actually, finally, uh, I'm, I'm glad they, they choose this, uh, this direction to develop. So the, uh, uh, finally now, uh, after, after uh, nearly 10 years now, we see the, we see the start to see some uh, result, really, really uh, interesting result happen. Thanks.